Hey, D. Dykstra here on another great math video for you. Uh, <clears throat> we're talking today about graphing an ellipse. All right, so we got some basic uh, general ideas we need to go over first. There are two different forms of this uh, where we are centered at the origin. So we should make a note of that, that these two forms are both center, center, at the origin, origin, right? And what that means is that they're centered at zero, zero. Okay, that's the origin. So if we're centered at zero, zero, there is no shift in either the x or the y direction. So let's look at the two general forms. We've got x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals one. And then we have x squared over b squared and y squared over a squared equals 1. And you're asking, well, what's the difference between the two? Well, the difference is this. 1 is going to be elongated in the x direction, and 1 will be elongated in the y direction. And how is that determined? Well, it's determined by the value of a and a squared. So a squared should always be the bigger number than b squared, all right? So a squared is greater than b squared. So if a squared, if the number here is bigger than this other number, then what we'll do is we will see that it will elongate in the x direction. If the a squared or the larger number is under the y category, then it will elongate in the y, uh, on the y axis. So, <clears throat> And then we have some focal points that we need to find. So the foci, or the foci, depending on how you want to say it, where you're from, um, is c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared. So it will always be the bigger number minus the smaller number. Now, if I want to get the value of c, then we will have the square root of a squared minus b squared. And we should also add in here that it's going to be the plus or minus value. So let's just go ahead and write this in here is equal to the plus or minus value of that, um, that value. So um, what, what does this mean in a graphical sense? So let's take a look at it. Here we have something where a squared or the value of a, right, is uh, the larger number, so this should be elongated in the x direction, and we see that. So here's the value of a, all right? So what we do is we take the square root of a, and of a squared, and we get the value of a. We take the square root of b squared, and we get the value of b. And all, all it basically does is you count a number of units across the x direction in both uh, sides. And then we're going to count the value of the b units in the y direction, both from the origin plus and minus, right? So a goes out and b and, and a goes out here, and then b goes from the, the y values, okay? So, <clears throat> and your focal point will be labeled as focal point one and focal point two, and they are c distance. Right, so that square root or that c distance uh, from there. Now, uh, we always want to make sure that the c value is less because it should be inside. So that's why we subtract the larger from the smaller to get something that's inside the ellipse. If we're looking at something that's in the y category, we will notice that our a value is the larger value, a squared is under the y category. So we will see that it'll elongate uh, in the y, up and down, and it's a units. Uh, we'll see some examples in a minute. And then <clears throat> it's b units in the width. And then, of course, c units uh, will be from the square root of a squared minus b squared. Now, you might notice also that your focal points are on the axis that is the elongated. So you'll notice that in the y category, when a squared is under y, 
then your focal points will be on the y-axis. When a squared or the larger number is in under the x, well then that means your focal points will be in the x uh, direction. <coughs> so let's look at an example, example number one. It says x squared plus y squared, well x squared over 36 plus y squared over 9. So we say, all right, well, if a squared is 36, then a must be plus or minus 6. If b squared is 9, then the b value is plus or minus 3. So now we go to graph it. So we know that in the x direction, from the center, we are going to go out left, 6 units, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we end up with negative 6. And we'll go 6 in the, in the positive direction, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then in the y direction, b squared was 9, so b is plus or minus 3. So from the center, we'll go up 1, 2, 3, and down 1, 2, 3. And then we simply draw the ellipse. Now, they're not going to look perfect because we don't have all the exact points, right? So you just want to get an idea. Look at mine. I mean, it looks uh, a little more pointed over here, but that's okay. Uh, we get the general idea. Now, <clears throat> we have to find the value of C. Well, C is 36 minus 9. Uh, uh, the square under the square root. So we get plus or minus, plus or minus, plus or minus, square root of 27. Well, you might say, oh, well, that's 3 root 3. Well, maybe we don't still recognize where 3 root 3 is. So what I like to do is this. <clears throat> I like to go, well, what are the perfect squares around square root of 27? Well, there's the square root of 36, and that's 6, so plus or minus 6. And then uh, square root of 25, well, that is uh, 5. And in this case, since it's plus or minus, it's plus or minus 5. So I know that square root of 27 is somewhere between 5 and 6. So then I go to my graph, and I simply try and, uh, and get it as close as possible. But I go out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's somewhere between 5 and 6. So I'll label that my focal point 1. I'll go out the other direction, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and it's been between 5 and 6, so that'll be my focal point number 2. Now, it, most, most of the time, it doesn't matter which one you call focal point 1 and focal point 2, uh, but basically what you want to do is just label them, and that way you know where they are. All right, example number 2. Here we get a situation where... Uh, <clears throat> x squared is over 16, y squared is over 49, b squared is equal to 16, so b is plus or minus 4, a squared is 49, a is plus or minus 7. And in this case, uh, again, the larger number is the b squared, so uh, this will elongate in the y direction, right? And we notice that in the graph. So we're going to go up 7, down 7, uh, left and right 4 units. We'll draw the ellipse. We'll find our c value. And we find that c is equal to the square root of 49 minus 16, which is 33. And again, you ask yourself, well, where is square root 33? Again, you use the basic test. Uh, well, square root of 36 is a little bit more. Square root of 25, which is the next perfect square, is a little bit less. So it's somewhere in between 5 and 6. Now, again, since it's elongated in the y direction, where do your focal points go? Yes, that's right, on the, in the y-axis. So we go up 5 and then, you know, 5 and some change, and then down 5 and some decimal values. As long as you're in between, that's fine. Um, on graph paper, it'll be easier uh, to, to be able to fulfill that, all right? So now, we have, let's go to our final example. <coughs> Here it says... Graph and locate the foci, or the foci, and uh, they give us an equation. 16x squared plus 9y squared equals 144. And you say, well, that doesn't make sense. It's supposed to be equal to 1. So what do we do? We have to divide everything by 144. And you notice we did that. When I divide 144 by 144, I get 1. Now it looks a little bit more simplistic. We get x squared over 9 
and y squared over 16. Now again, my a squared is 16, so my a value, my a value will be 4. Now it's under the y category, so I'm going to go up 4, down 4, and then 9 is the x category, so uh, uh, b squared is equal to 9, so b will be plus or minus 3. And so again, here this is plus or minus 4 in the x direction, or in the y direction, and this will be plus or minus 3, so we go out 3 from the origin. Focal points again, 16 minus 9, right? Square root of 16 minus 9 is the square root of 7. We ask ourselves, well, square root of 9 is a little bit more, square root of 4 is a little bit less, so it's going to be between 2 and 3. Again, we're on the y-axis, so we go down about two and some change there, a little bit in between, and then up two and between, so it's between two and three. Okay, well, that has been Graphing Ellipses. Hope you've enjoyed the show, and uh, we'll look forward to uh, more, okay? Graphing an ellipse. We'll look at some uh, next where we, where we move the center, of the, the center of the ellipse, okay? Anyway, thanks again. Have a great day. Peace. Keep it mathy.